Hey everybody. This is my gudgeon tank and recently one of the tubes burned out in one of the fixtures I have on this tank. Uh, it is a 40 breeder so it's 18 inches deep and therefore I have two fixtures on top. Each fixture has two tubes in it and the forward fixture had one of the tubes burn out and so I had to replace it with a 2700K tube which is a very soft white tube. Uh, I did order some more and I got them in today so I'm about to replace the tube in here with a 6500K tube so in just a moment we'll get to a little before and after and we'll see how much difference the uh, lighting makes but before that I wanted to actually just take a moment and show you what the T5 tubes look like. If you're not familiar with the fluorescent tubes the T5 tubes here are the really really small ones and if you're not familiar with where that number comes from, why it's called a T5, it's a really, really, really stupid way of measuring it, but it is measured in eighths of an inch. So the T5 is five eighths of an inch in diameter. It's just over half an inch. So this is a very narrow one, and it's the newest uh, tube you'll find on the market. The more common one is the T8, which is eight eighths of an inch, or if you measure it from here to here, it is one inch, and that's why it's a T8. The older ones, the ones you'll see in the old fixtures, like if you went to elementary school where I did, or any old office buildings or anything like that, you see those big fat tubes, those are T12, and they are 12 eighths of an inch, or an inch and a half in diameter. So the newer ones are the T5s. They're the ones that we're going to go ahead and replace here. They're the most efficient. They put out the most amount of light for the least amount of wattage. So give me a moment. I'm going to get the light replaced. We'll do a quick before and after, and we will see how much of a difference the soft 2700K, which is what we're looking at now, how much different that looks from the 6500K or the very cool uh, tube we're about to put in it. All right, and there's your after. So you can see it looks considerably brighter, and it probably is a little bit brighter, but I want to make sure that I'm clear when I'm talking about the color temperature. I'm not talking about how bright the light is. There are a lot of different ways we can measure the intensity of light. You'll often see uh, lumens or candle power, uh, the photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR, is often mentioned. That's something a little bit different. But LUX is another way to describe the intensity, or actually LUX is more like the amount of light that is actually being produced. So there's a lot of different ways to measure the amount of light that's being produced. But that's not what I'm talking about when I talk about color temperature. Color temperature is a way to measure fluorescent lights. If you've got an incandescent light, it doesn't really count, and I'll explain why here. Um, the way they come up with color temperature is if you think about uh, metal being worked in a forge, as that metal gets hotter and hotter, it starts to glow and it starts out glowing very red and it gets brighter red and eventually it goes up through the yellows and eventually it gets so hot that it glows white we even have the term white hot well everything that heats up goes through those exact same colors at those exact same temperatures so whether you're heating up a piece of bronze or you're heating up a piece of titanium cherry red is the exact same temperature in both of those pieces of metal. So when we're talking about color temperature, we're talking about an arbitrary piece of metal that can be heated up indefinitely. And we're using the Kelvin temperature scale. So that's where the K comes from. So 2700 K would be the sort of whitish but orangish glow you'd get around 2700 degrees Kelvin. And as the temperature increases and gets hotter and hotter, 
the light gets a whiter and whiter appearance. You're getting much more blue and less red. You're getting a higher energy radiation coming off of this piece of material that's getting hotter and hotter. So by the time we get up to 6,500 degrees Kelvin, we've got this nice bright white or cool white that's got nice lots of blue in it and a very high energy light and if you keep going up you get all the way up to about 10,000 K which I actually like I think 10,000 K gives you a really really nice uh, look in a tank and it's good for a planted tank but once you get above 10,000 K you start getting into what is called actinic light it's a very blue light and it looks kinda strange the, these are generally found on corals, uh, you know, reef tanks, because presumably, I don't know a lot about corals, but I do know that they come from tropical waters and they're in, you know, bright tropical sun all day long with shallow water magnifying the intensity on them. So presumably corals need a pretty high amount of energy in the light that they get, and that would explain why they need that sort of blue actinic light shining on them to give them that tremendous amount of energy. So the 6500K provides the plants with enough of the blue radiation that they can function well and they can grow properly while still showing off all their colors and looking good in those regards. The reason you don't get color temperature when you're talking about incandescent lights is because the incandescent light actually does have a piece of metal in there and it's glowing white hot. So it's all the way up at the top of the spectrum and you're getting everything off of it so it's just what it is it's white hot with the fluorescent lights they create light a little bit differently the gases that are inside when they get excited as the electricity runs through them those gases actually produce ultraviolet light that we cannot even see the ultraviolet light then hits the white powdery coating on the glass which is a phosphor and what a phosphor does is it takes a high energy light that shines on it and then it retransmits that light at a different wavelength. It doesn't simply reflect the light, it absorbs it and then re-emits it at a different wavelength. So all of this invisible light from the UV radiation hits these phosphors, the phosphors get excited and then the phosphors produce a particular glow depending on what kind of phosphor it is. So when you get into describing a fluorescent light, the type of phosphor you use makes a great deal of difference to what color light is produced. And that's why you have such a wide range of um, fluorescent lights. If you've ever gone shopping for compact fluorescent lights, it can get really confusing with all the little different numbers. And like I said, the lumens and the lux and the color temperature. So that's what color temperature is. Color temperature tells you the actual color of the light. It doesn't tell you how bright it is. It doesn't tell you how intense it is uh, or anything like that. You have to sort of understand lumens and wattages and things like that in order to get a better idea of the intensity of the light. Um, this fish actually is a fish that prefers a uh, more shady environment and would probably prefer a little bit less light in the tank but there are plenty of places for it to go down here in the bottom where it's nestled away and hidden in the shadows so it's doing just fine so there you go hope that made a little bit more sense and now if you didn't quite understand what lighting and color temperature meant uh, hopefully you will a little bit better now so thanks for watching this one uh, please make sure you're subscribed this one is currently my gudgeon and t-bar tank even though the t-bar is no longer in it so for now, that's what we're still calling it. Thanks again. See you real soon in the next one.